Okay, so here we are at uh, uh, trench one, um, uh, which looks like uh, uh, it has been struck with a meteorite shower, because obviously there's there's uh, very uh, many large rocks set, still set into the into the ground. Um, what we have really discovered uh, this year in this trench, uh, from the start of the excavation, is that uh, as we knew from last year's test pitting. Under the peat, we had a very uh, tightly packed rubble, which we at the time assumed it was it was the can material that that uh, that was uh, uh, remaining around the chamber. And indeed, once we started deconstructing that that rubble, uh, it was we got into stages from smaller rubble that was packed at the top and was quite disturbed to these to these very uh, large stones. A lot of them, which seemed to be to seem to be set at an angle. And uh, it seems to be it seems to be uh, a way that uh, that the can was constructed in this in this particular uh, um, a place next to the chamber where uh, some very large stones have gone in and then and then uh, a more sort of a square rectangular shaped stones flattish stones have been effectively uh, stacked into into uh, uh, in, in, in in some order and then smaller stones really just packed on top and in between all those all those stones so we didn't manage to move all of the big stones and we really didn't want to either what we've done we have managed to um, get in between areas in between them and uh, get down to the to the natural well, first to the to the neolithic uh, ground level but then to the natural soil uh, in uh, in which we were then uh, able to sample uh, these deposits for which ho hopefully will give us some dating material um, Above that we also uh, uh, at the very top we can see some uh, uh, prone stones here large stones uh, megaliths which we think uh, are basically have tumbled from this line of the facade of the chamber tomb uh, between between the remaining upstanding stones that are still in place over there now that story will be picked up next season when we're extending trench into the forecourt. So effectively coming from one side of the facade of the chamber can onto the what would have been uh, the front uh, open space in front of the in front of the chamber can. So uh, apart from that, we have also learned the size, the sheer size of the autostats, which um, if uh, if you can see down next to next to Rob, uh, uh, the autostat, which above ground is visible uh, that much, is actually have been buried by the peat and also have been uh, uh, set amongst this can material into the uh, packed with rubble from the can to keep it to keep it in upright upright position. We are now sampling the soil that is actually underlying underlying the autostat and hopefully that will provide us with the dating material for the for the construction of the of the of the chamber um, some of the material we have left left in place for stability because obviously some of the autostats have have uh, already uh, begin to lean inwards and at the far end we have autostat which has completely actually uh, almost completely uh, fallen out. Exposing the end of that autostat has been very helpful because what, uh, what, what, what was known before, it looked like there's a kink in the alignment of the, of the chamber. But now we know that really this is just a product of the, of the tumbling of the autostat inwards and we know that the, that the chamber was, was really uh, uh, very uh, um, uh, well design construction which which has uh, which had straight side more, more or less straight sides from the back to the to the front to the to the uh, jam stones at the front oh, and and the portal stones which would have been <coughs> would have been erected at the at that at the entrance so that is the story of trench one there has been few artifacts few quartz uh, blades knives little quartz bladelets flakes uh, mainly in quartz, there was I think one flint tool that we had, and we had a small whiskey bottle from the 
from the peat in the top of the chamber which is always amusing and, and, and interesting especially in Isla context so here we are at trench 3 which is the second trench that we are excavating this year um, we have placed this trench here on the basis of uh, two things um, a, a large um, a megalith poking out of the ground there which we thought might be a displaced uh, a piece of, of the chambered, chambered chamber over there and also because of the geophysical anomalies uh, high resistance anomalies that we were picking up from the results of the last year's geophysics now uh, what we have uh, uh, discovered is that um, the, the megalith and, uh, and a few other stones that have been poking through the ground form uh, a rough but quite substantial wall running running on on, on that alignment uh, underneath that across entire extent of the trench we have had this this rubble that can you can see in a section now which uh, when when we came onto it formed a very uniform cobbled surface hard standing surface and then underneath that we have a very very substantial structure built from a, a, a very um, well chosen flat shaped stones with a, with a, with a nice face edge to the wall running running on that alignment here and beginning to curve in in that direction over there on the inside of that double double skin wall are also very large stones which seem to be forming some sort of internal internal platform and the only thing that this massive structure can be is uh, 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 outer curb of the of the can of the chambered can